What's going on, everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash, and today is July 21st of 2019. Well, folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are. And in today's video, I want to talk about a lot of different things for the update. We're going to start off by talking about a potential positive shift for altcoins going into the next few months, as we might be on the verge of an altcoin cycle due to a lot of market factors. Along with this as well, we've got to talk about massive outflows from the BitMEX exchange. I'm going to be explaining why that is and also applying my opinion to the current scenario. And last but not least as well, in regards to traditional markets, there's a key date that you guys need to watch in order to uh, keep an eye not only on how stocks are going to perform, but also it might have an impact on cryptocurrencies as well. So we've got lots to discuss. And one last thing that I want to talk about, guys, that has to do with a very famed individual, Steve Wozniak, and a specific conference that I'm really excited to attend. So stay tuned for that later on in the video. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the current market here. As we can see over the last 24 hours, a decent amount of cryptocurrencies are in the green, but we're really still seeing the majority of players really in neutral territory here between 1% to 2% to the upside or downside. This is as Bitcoin has been pushing sideways in the upper $10,000 range. We're currently around $10,600 to 10800 We've been bouncing around really over the last few hours, and we're not getting any serious trend at the moment. However, as we can see here, we have regained a lot of market capitalization, up about $40 billion from the lows. Again, good to see. Uh, again, we're a decent ways away from the kind of parabolic rally that we had to valuations around $365 billion. So I think we're still feeling a little bit of the pain. However, again, we're back to territory that we were here at uh, in the later part of June. So basically month's been relatively flat. I'd say for a correction, uh, that's that's pretty good, you know, just basically shaving off uh, about a month's worth of gains in this case. So really not that bad. And actually, technically, it'd be really less than a month if you were to technically take it here from the peak. So Again, not bad at all. As we take a look here, going down to market dominance, again, we can start to see that there has been a little bit of a decline here. And this alone isn't why I'm feeling we're getting an altcoin cycle, guys. There's a lot of times where you have little small declines in Bitcoin dominance. You're like, oh, could this be the cycle? No, that's not enough reason to uh, believe that an altcoin cycle is coming. However, I will say that I really do like seeing the other coins indicator here, which is by far the second largest measurement because it's basking all the other cryptos outside of the individual ones they have down here is starting to actually curve upward we can start to see again it's, it's starting to sell off much slower in the periods that it does correct and it seems as if it's almost bottoming out and looking like it might want to pick up a, uh, for the next cycle now again we'll talk about that as we go throughout the video and we'll get started on it now so Altcoins set to outperform, uh, outperform Bitcoin I know this is a very controversial topic guys I'll, I'll be absolutely dead fair with you guys a lot of altcoins are just speculative plays um, a lot of them haven't developed much fundamentally i think a lot of the protocols that we've been eager for uh you know i think that we're, we were excited for in 2017 and even some of the peer-to-peer -peer digital currencies that i've championed and stuff in the past have been kind of slow in development crypto development takes a while it's it's just like software development it doesn't happen overnight not to mention it's even harder than software development because you're launching software that is tied to a, a general store of value of you know tens to hundreds of millions of dollars if not billions of dollars so even in these early stages it's very difficult to make serious moves like that because if something goes wrong that could be a really big failure for the network and for the people who are holding the coins tied to that network so anyways Putting that aside, though, I think development in general has also just generally moved slower than expected because it is difficult to build these things. And, you know, there also is a lot of projects as well that aren't going to make it in this cycle. So we have to be skeptical in a lot of regards that, you know, I don't think this time around we're going to be getting a major all around cycle like we had in December. Altcoin cycles vary in, in nature. There was a few very select key players who really outperformed back in the early part of 2017 when, uh, excuse me, back in like 2016 and 2017 uh, when we started to reach back to the all-time highs at 1100 for Bitcoin back then and started to correct down to $700 and then spark the next rally upward to 20,000. Uh, I think we're very much going to be in a similar nature to that. We're going to have some new players come into the scene like Ethereum did, like XRP did, that really started to kind of become market leaders and gain massive market capitalization. And I have a few players that I'm watching for that. We'll talk about them in that altcoin cycle video that I've got coming up here soon. But I want to start talking about some of these catalysts that make me feel that we are on the verge of an altcoin cycle or we're we're getting very close i know people have uh, been eager for this it's like it's become a meme at this point uh, i don't think we're going to again get as significant as a cycle as people uh, some people think we're going to do exactly what we did back in uh you know the end of 2017 not this time around in my opinion guys we're not going that low in the sense of bitcoin dominance but 
doesn't mean that altcoins, many altcoins can't produce a two or three X in this cycle or three or five X for some of the newer players. So what are, you know, some of the signs that are making me confident? Well, I hate to use <laughs> this guy. This guy's an interesting name, Benjamin Blunts. Uh, I, I, I wanted to talk about his chart here. Uh, that was really interesting where basically just generally should know uh, he's generally showed an uptrend line here This is when we really started to enter into a more parabolic phase for Bitcoin dominance here And over the last three days we have had a correction here in dominance and I'll actually show here on the chart If we take a look at that on trading view uh, There's not only this line here that we're actually starting to clear through right here again not significant enough I'd like to see a huge like two or three percent drop in Bitcoin dominance through this line to really clarify that okay cycle shift is coming in time to start reassessing our portfolios getting excited for more risk taking but along with that one thing that i noticed and i think it's so simple but a lot of us didn't really note is that bitcoin dominance is back up to where it was peaking out december 8th of 2017. very interesting i think this is something Definitely keep an eye on personally. Uh, I mean, you've got this kind of squeeze here. You've got the expectations that Bitcoin dominance is going to keep rising. And it usually is that if the trend builds up enough momentum and it can't eventually keep up, especially when it hits these kind of key resistance points, then you're going to get a squeeze. You're going to get Bitcoin dominance depleting. That doesn't mean Bitcoin's price is going down. It might mean that a lot of the uh, you know, uprising in valuation is going to come through altcoins. You might see a slight correction in Bitcoin, like we've seen historically, where some of that value is going to flow into altcoins. And with smaller market caps and less volume, means that these things can move very quickly, right? And we're at a point as well, I think people have just been absolutely like almost kind of done for with altcoins, you know, with how, how great Bitcoin has performed. And that's usually the time to get eager. That's at least when I start taking my positions and getting uh, a little bit more risky. So as we take a look here, uh, we've, we've taken a look at Bitcoin, but I want to take a look at a few other indicators. Excuse me, we looked at Bitcoin dominance, but I want to take a look at a few other things. So we can see here, for example, as I'll talk about in the altcoin cycle, you want to watch, uh, you know, historically when you see a curvature point in uh, altcoins comparative to Bitcoin. You don't want to look at their USD charts because altcoins compared to the US dollar have risen this year so far. Uh, they've, they've performed better than most assets in the world, but they haven't been able to outpace Bitcoin yet, which is the whole game here, guys. It's a it's a circulation of capital between uh, more established players like Bitcoin and Ethereum downward towards a lot of altcoins in the space. We can see here that we're getting very, very close to what might potentially be a curvature point. Not to mention Litecoin already got a nice little bump up the other day. Right now we're getting a flat line here in Ethereum and XRP. So we're now maintaining momentum again with Bitcoin at these levels, showing that again, I think people are starting to take risk at these levels. They believe that there's a decent buy around this range, but we haven't seen the momentum yet. So we don't trade on it just yet. And also NVT has started to deplete as well. In the last cycle, we had a massive depletion of NVT here uh, when we had the peak out in this cycle. Now, the previous one, uh, we did not. And the reason why is because NVT wasn't so overextended. There was a large increase in the use of Bitcoin as Bitcoin's price was going up, right? That time around, we didn't really get it. This was more around, you know, excitement for institutional money coming through the, uh, the Bitcoin futures contracts. And this time around as well, I think we've got a lot of institutional hype. So I think that's where there's some similarities here. But in the grand scheme of things, guys, uh, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the fact that, you know, for example, we do have a slight decline in MVT. And the biggest thing here is, as we talked about, this Bitcoin dominance uh, decline. If you get, again, a good 2% drop, uh, it could be a good sign that, you know, we've not only cleared through this uptrend line, but that we are finally set for altcoins to start gaining some popularity. I think you're going to be much more likely to see that as we retest towards 20,000. History has told us that when we revisit those highs and then have a liquidity exit as we hit some resistance, that's when altcoins can really strike. So I've got some cash I'm going to be building up. I'm going to be putting into positions once we get around that range. But for now, I've already got a decent stack of altcoins that are recently added, and uh, some of them performing quite well, down a tad bit on some, but uh, I've actually been picking some of the ones that have been able to keep up in the sell-off quite well. So, really excited for that. And again, I'm holding more for the greater cycle here, guys. Alrighty, so talking about altcoins, Coinbase bins uh, are basically trashes uh, the bundle package that it used to sell on the exchange. Well, again, they weren't really technically you know, so much selling it, but basically it was an altcoin bundle that you could buy where you could have a, a weighted portfolio between uh, five of the cryptocurrencies that Coinbase offered. 
So they've gotten rid of this on the platform. Now I actually have mixed signals about this because uh, traditional me, you know, my investor self loves diversification. Uh, I've I've seen it pay off very well. Sometimes I know you, you might say to yourself, oh, I could have had $100 or 100% of my money in this one investment that I really liked more than anything and it did better than any other investment that I had. But diversification does protect you. Uh, in the case of crypto though, I have to say, you cannot be as, uh, how I would say, uh, I guess kind of liberal in the sense of like how many coins you're going to own in this case. Uh, you don't want to, you know, just own a basket of projects. I saw a lot of people do that through 2017 and 2018. Uh, and I've just know that in this space where anyone can generate a token, it's much more difficult to formulate a company than it is a token. And when you have an ETF and those ETFs, for example, track the NASDAQ or the S&P 500, it's difficult to get a company there. <laughs> you have to have something that's usually revenue generating uh, or is at least fundamental in some sense of producing something as a working product uh, that at least got to the stage of being public. That means there's been a lot of capital tossed at it, a lot of different types of developments coming through in the company. And in the case here with these cryptocurrencies, yeah, they might have a higher market cap or might be legally tradable on Coinbase. But it doesn't mean that they're always going to be good for your portfolio, especially not to mention the one thing I have a concern of is diversification is key. But if you don't understand what you're diversifying into, it's no better than investing into one company and not knowing what it is, right? It's just as bad. You need to know what your money's going into. You need to understand a general idea of what the technology is about, uh, at least what kind of market use case it's about and what kind of utility you can get out of it. Not so much how the network operates. That's more the technical side. So... I'm a little upset to see this, but I think it's, you know, Coinbase is listening to the market here. There's just not much of a demand. Altcoins have not been performing well. Maybe they'll bring it back as uh, the altcoin sale comes here. Maybe this is a catalyst. The bottom is in. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about here was the $73 million we've seen flow out of BitMEX recently as we've seen news that, uh, you know, the CFTC... I might be kind of getting a little bit more uh, in depth in its research of uh, BitMEX as an exchange. There's been a lot of concerns as of recent, as there's finally been over the last few months, this kind of crackdown on a lot of the exchanges that don't do heavy KYC, that uh, don't have any kind of ways to combat users who are using VPNs, things of that sort. And there's been over oh, nearly $100 million here, guys, almost. Uh, and money that has come out of BitMEX in the last week. It's been the largest outflow that we've not only seen out of BitMEX in a while, but out of all the exchanges over the last 24 hours. This is an $85 million outflow in the last 24 hours. Now, of course, some new money has come in, leading us to the figure of $73 million in this case. So, now, w this is generally, again, uh, to explain it, as I mentioned, this is due to the fact that there have been more crackdowns on these exchanges that are in, you know, offshore islands across the world. I mean, we know Binance, for example, is in Malta. Uh, we know that, you know, in this case, I, I always forget the how to pronounce it. It's like St. Sheely's or whatever. I, I always forget the island name. But it's it's a common place. It's an offshore banking area. And uh, you're allowed to operate a lot of crypto businesses out there as well. Many people do it. It's just to, to benefit from the regulatory environment. However, when you're dealing with U.S. traders, you need to respect U.S. law. Uh, that's the whole kind of gig around it. And I have to say, you know, as much as guys as I, I, I get the whole kind of libertarian kind of like, you know, fight the system kind of mantra. BitMEX, in my personal opinion, is a platform that I've never advocated for people to use. And I still to this day, even though I can't give you guys financial advice, I wouldn't advocate people use it. I think BitMEX itself as an exchange has had a lot of issues. I know its backend systems are the same that a lot of other previous exchanges use. It has the same uh, matching order uh, matching order issues that I've seen before where people don't get their stops triggered and they end up getting liquidated or losing their money. Uh, I've seen people, for example, have all kinds of disastrous scenarios where there's system maintenance and then there's huge moves in the market. Uh, again, I just personally don't really like to mess with BitMEX. And I honestly don't think that most people it's just my opinion. You guys have every right to go do what you want. I know you can go get access to it in Forex markets and in some stock brokerages, and that is leverage. If you guys want to mess with leverage, that's fine. Uh, but I will tell you all, I mean, there's a reason they, they joke about the whole BitMEX wrecked uh, kind of scenario, and there's the, there's the Twitter page where you can go see all these huge people getting liquidated. It's a casino. I mean, you want to talk about crypto being volatile as is, no doubt, 100% agree. You want to put 5 or 10x margin on that? Really? Like, I think that's just so crazy. Like, you could literally lose all your money if you're 10x margin on a position and, you know, your position goes down 10%. Say we have another flash crash tomorrow, you lose all your money. 
That doesn't sound like a great way to trade or invest, in my personal opinion. Unless you know how to properly use stops, unless you know how to assess risk, and you have a great suite of indicators and a good eye for picking up lows and uh, shorting tops. Most people really don't, though. And uh, I'll say that about myself as well. I'm, I'm not perfect at picking those. That's why I don't trade margin. So I'm quite comfortable in saying that. Anyways, one real quick thing, guys, in the sense of uh, the last bit of crypto news here. I know there's a conference I'm going to be speaking at in the next few months in October, and that is the Delta Summit. Now, I went to the last one in 2018. It was a lot of fun. Malta is an absolutely beautiful place. I'm so happy this is the crypto haven that we've kind of, you know, realized as, as the place for cryptocurrency startups to begin. And uh, Malta's obviously in the past as an island nation, it always needs to kind of step out of its shell and uh, open up new types of businesses or create a regulatory environment that helps new businesses and new industries. And Malta has been in full fledged support of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Uh, you know, some of the leadership, the prime minister has been a huge supporter. Well, if you guys know Steve Wozniak from Apple, he recently attended the pre-event for the Delta Summit uh, just this past week and uh, was talking about, you know, not only the Malta environment, he said, uh, moving to Malta, you know, he's not only had Malta on his maps in regards to some of the exciting regions of the world where there's going to be a lot of innovation, but he quoted himself as saying, it has been on my mind for decades, like no other place in the world to move to Malta. Um and uh, to live there someday. I think that's really exciting. He also praised the government saying that parts of it are very favorable in moving forward in the modern world. So he really sees that they're pushing the boundaries here. Now, Steve Wozniak, if you guys don't know, uh, was uh, one of the major uh, founding entities uh, or individuals in the entity of Apple. And being kind of some of the brains uh, from the early days, kind of helping Steve, who was more on the creative side, uh, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak was more on the tech side. So he really is good at seeing upcoming trends here. He's very smart in regards to the fields that he pursues. And you can see here, here's just some of the photos from the event. Now, again, He's not the only person and stuff, guys. There's a lot of people tied to the Delta Summit. More specifically, the speakers that are going to be attending the conference. They've got a lot of different people. Again, the Prime Minister of Malta, Dr. Joseph Muscat, who's really cool. I walked by him when I was at the last conference, and it was just like there's all these bodyguards and everything. But they've got all these really cool people here. They've got uh, people like Tim Byan, uh, who's uh, the founder of OKCoin, one of the largest exchanges. Uh, not to mention, we have CZ as well, who's going to be attending. Uh, da Hong Fei. You've got all kinds of people all throughout this list guys i bet you'll find someone you really like uh, i will say i'm gonna boycott this guy i don't know he's just like some about him i'm just kidding <laughs> but no i will be attending as a speaker guys i'm excited for it uh there's all kinds of individuals and stuff that they've got through here as well one of my good friends aaron who i've met along my travels uh there's a lot of people i think who are also going to be signed up as well who aren't registered just yet so if you guys can make it definitely try to make it out and if you're interested if you want to buy tickets, there's early bird tickets now. You can get 50% off with the code WAS50OFF, which is pretty cool. So I'd like to see you guys there. Even if you guys aren't crazy about conferences, if you can make it out, it'd be awesome. The tickets are really not that expensive. And uh, not to mention if you if you get like kind of one of the lower ones, not to mention if you pay with the early bird, uh, you know, discount code you guys can get it for anywhere from 30 to 60 euros not that bad for you know multi-day experience not to mention malta is absolutely beautiful it's one of my favorite places i visited valletta is like you know, there's there's some cities where you can just kind of walk through and you don't have to like you don't have to see any big touristy things you don't have to do anything big you don't have to spend a lot of money just kind of get some good food i got some like really good gelato when i was there and i was just walking through malta and I was just like, wow, this place is so historic. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. And the people there are so nice. All right. So last little bit of news here, guys. In the sense of traditional markets, uh, I want to talk about uh, not only the very interesting kind of rollover here we've had in the NASDAQ. Now, a lot of yesterday's downward price action was uh, due to a shock in Netflix and a few other key companies. However, this went across all indices. So it went from the NASDAQ, which is more tech focused, to the S&P 500, and also even to the industrials, to the Dow Jones. We're starting to roll over here. And again, though it's not exact highs here, we have set all new highs here for, um, for most of the indices. At the end of the day, we are topping out at a very similar range. And I think this is calling upon the Federal Reserve to be very... Um, very laid back in the sense of monetary policy, being very open to cutting interest rates sharply, and also considering talks about the freezing of reducing its balance sheet. So going from quantitative easing to either maintaining neutral policy or quantitative easing. I think they need to hint in this next FOMC meeting that they're going to consider 
purchase, purchasing up financial assets in times of you know, downturns in the market in order to press us up to the NASDAQ 10,000. You know, we're currently right now around 8146. I think there's a chance we could get it, but they're going to have to mention again multiple interest rate cuts this year. And they're also going to have to uh, hit towards quantitative easing. I don't think they'll say anything finite until we start to get towards this uh, scary volatile period in markets. But I have no doubt the Fed might hint to it. They've already hinted that they'd be open to using the measures of quantitative easing. And this is, uh, you know, kind of talking to the broader sense of this kind of whole equity entire world bubble that we're in. Everyone's basically becoming Japan at this point. We're going to copy the exact same routine that Japan has done for its markets to keep its equity market up, where the Fed just keeps buying up assets on the open market. It doesn't make much sense. It's crazy, guys. The system can go on for a very long time, so we shouldn't try to bet against it. We just simply follow with what the Fed does. So the reason why I want to talk about this is that in the next few days, a little over a week here, we are going to have the FOMC meeting either on July 30th or the 31st. We'll have to figure out when that is. We don't know for sure, but it will be in one of those two dates. And as I mentioned, uh, we will likely be live streaming it when it does come. Uh, again, we had planned to do a live stream on, I think, earlier in July, but it, I thought they were going to do a mid-month meeting. Uh, so we will definitely keep an eye out for the 30 and 31st. I hope you guys will stay tuned with me and we'll do a live stream. Watch how it not only impacts equity markets, which I think will be very, very interesting to watch, but also how it will affect crypto markets. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting movement here in the sense of how this will affect Bitcoin, uh, and not to mention as well, gold and silver. So I hope you guys will stay tuned for that. There's a lot of exciting things coming out of the pipeline. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you guys liked it, please leave a like down below. Subscribe if you guys haven't. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss a video. And leave a comment down below if you guys have anything to say on what we talked about. I'd love to get a discussion going. Are you guys excited, uh, you know, in the sense of, you know, a potential altcoin cycle coming around the corner. Do you guys believe Bitcoin is just going to continue to outpace the market here and that an altcoin cycle is not coming? What do you think about all the news with BitMEX, things of that sort in the crypto space? Love to know down below in the comments. But until the next video, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay tuned.